Tandrika. Yeah. Today we will hear about uh, verse number 56. And it's one of the key verses also when Naratam Das Thakur is giving us a great hope and also a big inspiration of his sadhana and how how we can continue to go become more mature and ripe in our practice of divine you know we want to you know we want to be part of the servants who are serving divine love who are serving Sri Radha Mohan and especially and foremost who are serving Sri Radhika. how is this going to work let's hear about it Sadane ye dhyane chai, Siddhade he tahapai, Paka paka matra sevichara, Apake sadana riti, Pakile se prema bhakti, Pakati lakshana tatva. Sada. Sorry, I cannot somehow make my face more light. Now it's coming, but yeah, I guess it's enough. The treasure I desire as a practitioner, I will get when I attain my spiritual body. It's just a question of being ripe or unripe. The ripe stage is the stage of pure loving devotion and the unripe stage is the stage of practice. That is the essential truth about devotional principles. So isn't that very inspiring? It's so simple because the truth is always simple. At the same time, there's many, many indications in there. What is ripe? What is un unripe? How is the process to become more ripened? And that we will hear now. The essence of the truth. In the previous verse, Srila Thakur Mahashai explained how sadhana and siddhi are qualitatively identical. So what does it mean? It means sooner or later we will reach the goal. So that practice and getting the perfection of practice is on one level already the the truth because when i practice something like i am an uh, how do you say apprentice right for example i'm a handyman i work with the wood so what do you learn first you learn how to cut the wood how to measure the wood how to differentiate the different kinds of wood no? they are so different so many different kinds of trees and all of their woods they have a special um quality some are very good to make furniture and some are not so good for making like a nice almira or something some are better to make a house or so uh, some trees they grow very big and then you can make big logs some trees are not so big they are small you can maybe only cut something out of them and you use their branches for the firewood so it's a big art when we are apprentices when we are practitioners first of all we are learning about the different different uh, stages of bhakti maybe also about the different teachers about the historical background and we hear so many things but we always know 
at the end of the lesson or at the end of the apprenticeship, when my teacher, my guru, sees that I am more ripe, he will give me the treasure of what he has learned from his guru. But it comes in stages. It comes in stages, but all the time when we are in the different stages of practitioners, we have the goal in our vision and we have the goal in our hearts. So it is simultaneously there. We are always desiring to learn and to get the, how do you say that, matura, the ripe stage in school also. We don't start with the PhD. We start with the ABCs. But at the same time, we know that there are different, different graduations and levels I'm going through. through. So sadhana and siddhi are qualitatively identical. In this tripadi, he uses an analogy to ascertain this more firmly, to make it stick in our hearts. He says sadhana bhakti, bhava bhakti, and prema bhakti are sequential. They are qualitatively identical stages of each other. I know my good if Narayan Maharaj, he was always very eager to teach us this. What is the goal of sadhana bhakti? It's bhava bhakti. It's to become emotionally involved and also to become, you know, to to be in relationships. Relationships are emotional. They are connections. They are sambandha, means connections that are specific and getting more and more specific. For example, in the beginning, I learned, yes, I am eternal part of God, of the divine, of divine love. Yes, but at the same time, I don't know in which relationship I am. Nobody told me. So I was more or less, you know, enjoying all the different incarnations of Krishna. I like a Lord Nishigadev and Lord Ram and in Srimad Bhagavatam also we have all these different stories. And we read the whole Srimad Bhagavatam. Not only once, maybe two or three times. But still, my Sambandha Gyan, my relationship was not completely, you know, ar arisen. I, I didn't have a, a specific relationship. I know I am a servant and I was very happy with that, to be a servant and to serve. But then later on, I meet other gurus, other teachers who say to me, you are... Shimati Radhika's servant. Oh, my God. Because I was also so, I'm very naive, you know. I'm very a simple person also. And I thought, wow, somebody can see that I am Shimati Radhika's Dasi. It was my Gurudev Narayan Maharaj. And I believe it. I, th I, I think, wow, great. He tell me. <laughs> I believe him. <laughs> I don't have to. Uh, you know, try to find out myself because I am very uh, a beginner. How can I know in which relationship? So that is already an example how sadhana bhakti will create bhava bhakti. Why? Because sooner or later, Radha and Mohan will see the servant, Chigoranga will see and feel the servant and will tell Oh, you have to meet this person. You have to hear from this person. You should learn from that soul. And then finally, we always go, you know, through the steps, either in our different years of bhakti or also with our different teachers or and also with the teachers in our different, um, how do you say, eagerness to advance. But the goal is to have prema bhakti or to serve in prema bhakti. To serve, we could say, Shrimati Radhika, who is the personification of prema bhakti and who is the divine goddess of all kinds of prema, all kinds of love that is you know, offered to Krishna 
as as our heart and soul. So they are qualitatively identical, but they are also sequential, means they come in graduations. So these, you know, these graduations, they need not to be the same with everybody. Because even from past lives, from past impressions in our hearts, we have different, different um, backgrounds. Some people, they go uh, through the church, they go through university, they go through, you know, different, different stages. But some people, they end up also directly with the highest masters of, of their realizations. So we should not judge each other. I should not judge myself, but at the same time, I need to know that there are sequences, that there are stages, but also these stages, they depend on many circumstances. Because, for example, if I am a lot of times together with a very self-realized soul, then the dust of their realizations, you know, their maturity will ripen my bhakti. And we know that if I have an avocado who is very, uh, uh, like, uh, raw, very, very, uh, how do you say that? Not soft, but hard. <laughs> hard. <laughs> the hard uh, avocado, everyone knows this example. Many devotees, they love avocados because they are very healthy. So this hard avocado, how it becomes softer quickly? Because sometimes you have the case that if an avocado is very hard, means they, they took it from the tree when it was very unripe. And sometimes if you put the avocado by itself somewhere and you wait maybe for one week, oh, is my avocado getting soft? Can I offer it to Radha Mohan? You can be unlucky because the avocado might still be hard and will never get soft. But if you put the avocados, the hard avocado with some apples, then the energy of the ripe apples will go into the avocado and make her soft. And that is actually the secret in devotional service, that we know there are sequences and we know there are gradu graduations, but also we know there is shortcuts. <laughs> There is the hiding, uh, how do you say, the hidden path of devotion. <laughs> and that is always the mercy of the Vaishnavas, the mercy of the sadhus, the mercy of the holy lands, the dust of Vrindavan, and of course also uh, my own desire, how intense I want to pursue. So the treasure of direct loving service that the Raga Nuga Sadaka desires as he performs his sadhana of meditating on Sri Radha Mohan's service, they will attain when he achieves Prema Siddhi in his Siddha Swarup. So the direct loving service that any devotee who is going on the path of Raga Bhakti means intense, you know, desire to serve like the Brajabhasis, like Vrindavan's inhabitants, like all the gopis, like Shemate Radhika's dasis. That is the machine to make the, how do you say, to make the, the ripening uh, happen quickly. But it will be achieved. It will be achieved. So, you know, I when I read or meditate this verse, it gives me a lot of hope because I know, you know, any any apple will be ripe, any banana will be ripe, any green ba banana will be ripe, and uh, any mango will be ripe. But at the same time, I aspire to be though about among those ripe bananas 
and those ripe mangoes and those ripe apples <laughs> because that will make me ripe quickly <laughs> because their um, flavor and their color and all of their softness you know the mangoes they become so soft and they my god they smell so attractive <laughs> so me as the unripe mango as the green mango i want to go quickly to a ripe mango <laughs> so that i can also develop the flavors of love and my service may be you know perfected more perfected or more loving and more uh how do you genuine more real less artificial and less under pressure and that is called greedy devotion Laul Yamai Bhakti. Greedy devotion. And the other day we were talking about this, you know, difference or the connection of Vaidhi and Raganuga. And I think it's not something that uh, you could ever uh, separate. Because sometimes the people, they speak about it Oh, yeah, I was in Vaidhi and that was really tough or it was not so nice. I don't feel like it. I never feel like it. I always feel that all the experiences in life, they were the mercy of, of my teachers. And also, I should say, the mercy that I really desired. And that mercy, I don't know where it comes from. Probably because I am so much, um, how do you say, for forlorn in this material world that i was always looking for eternal love as i think most of us we always want to feel eternal love and pure love and selfless love and where does it come from it comes from you know that potential in my heart that i am already that darcy or that servant of the divine that wants to feel themselves in an eternal position again. And that is called greedy devotion. I want to attain it. I want to, you know, I know it it is it is real. It's not a dream. <laughs> and then we are doing sadhana bhakti. Baba says this greedy devotion, it is real sadhana. Because then this greed will be the drive. Not only some fear or some, uh, I have heard we should, you know, some uh, so-called, uh, how do you say, knowledge of so-called uh, position. Even in bhakti, sometimes we there are motivations that are not completely pure. But by the time the apprentice is going through the stages, they become mature. So we don't look at this. We don't judge ourselves. In bhakti, actually, there is no judgment. Why? Because we are all in the same boat. And we want to help each other to cross the ocean of material existence or of material limitations. And if we are together in that boat, then we better help each other and not uh, make the boat sink. <laughs> Because if one person sinks, then we all together sink. So better we help each other to row quickly. <laughs> so when, when this when this lowly my bhakti greedy devotion moves towards perfection, moves, you know, Baba doesn't say is perfected, but moves. We are all in the movement, right? We are rowing the boat. We are from A, we are going to B. So we are in the movement. We need to be moving. We cannot get stuck because that's not so nice to get stuck in the middle of the ocean. There are ma many dangers in the ocean. Hmm? The sun can become hot. The water can run out. We might hit any rock. We may become dehydrated. There are so many dangers in this ocean of existence. So if we have a good captain, 
he will always say, and row, and row, and move. <laughs> the movements need to be continuous, no? And this is greedy devotion. And then when this intensifies, that desire to move, that desire to grow, and the desire to serve, then it's called prema bhakti. So between sadhana bhakti, the practice, and the, you know, higher uh, graduations of feelings, there's only one thing, it's the movement. And the greedy desire to go towards the goal and the good association that makes us ripe and helps us grow. And the, also the understanding that we are in here together. Now we are brothers and sisters and we want to reach the goal and we respect each other. We like to uplift each other in our move, uh, like journey over the material ocean to the spiritual, let's say, land. <laughs> but that land is also the land in my heart and my mind, and we all know it is not an external place. It's mostly, and first of all, internal. So, and that's why, and here Baba quotes another one, the Brihad Bhagavatamrita, what is the characteristic of Siddhi is the practice of the Sadaka. Sadhana Bhakti keeps the fire for the attainment of Prema Bhakti or direct service awake. No? It is awake. It's not asleep. If it's asleep, then I don't move. When I don't move, then I feel lazy or feel crazy. But the real uh, motivation is to move, to to be in a you know, to be in the movement of love, and it keeps that desire. Awake means the desire is a greedy desire. It's not any kind of like, yes, I will go and then I will do that. And maybe at the end of this life. No, that's not enough. That will keep us very slow. But there must be some enthusiasm. And Baba is sharing more about this. Sadhana Bhakti always keeps the desire for the attainment of prema bhakti or direct service. Direct service means my service. I want to comb Srimati Radhika's hair. Or I want to massage the lotus feet of my Gurudev. I want to uh, sit together with the Vaishnavas who have the same heart's desires. This is the nature of sadhana bhakti. And therefore, the blessed author says, Sadhana ye dana chai. Insatiability, insatiability is the nature of bhakti. The more advanced the sadhaka becomes in his devotional practice, the more eagerness and anxiousness he will feel rising in his heart. See? It's insatiable, means. It is not a thirst that can ever be quenched. It's not that I drink the holy name or I drink whatever I do, my, my reading, my chanting, and then I get enough of it. No, there's always a feeling inside, I want to do more. What can I do now? But okay, now I have to cook. Oh yes, I will cook. It's Srimati Radharani's kitchen. Oh, I have to clean. Yes. I clean because cleaning means cleaning my heart. My whole apartment is like should be like a kunj. I want to have this feeling when I clean. And then it's not a drag, but it's something that is connected to my inner self and to my Darcy bath. And I was just hearing a lecture of Gurudev lately that I really love. I don't know. I for example, when I can, when we are in separation with Gurudev, what to do? We no, he's not coming. So to the zooms now, we cannot even have his darshan. So I have to 
connect to him. I want to connect because I feel empty without feeling connect, connection. So then I listen to classes. I have on my phone some classes where I even I was also with him in Vrindavan and these are my treasures. So and then I listen and then I again and again listen and then even by listening the feelings come in my heart that I am so connected with Gurudev that he has uh, you know generously given me these treasures of his heart and that makes it for me personally juicy even in the even in the times of separation when we cannot hear gurudev or see gurudev so often but we are coming right we are coming to the classes we want to meet we want to inspire each other we want to exchange our heart feelings we want to see each other i want to see you because when i see all of you who are greedy and who are so you know inspiring and insatiable means they get never enough that really is is you know clicking with me <laughs> because i also don't get enough i think it's a good thing i read i hear it's a good thing but i just don't do it because i read it because i feel it and i'm also you know happy that i feel it because i don't want my my desires to die or actually i don't want to go in another direction of course i'm a uh, conditioned soul i am not free of that but still at the same time i'm so happy we have this chance to meet every day to exchange to feel each other to speak with each other to sing insatiability is the nature of bhakti and the more advanced the sadaka becomes in his devotional practice the more eagerness and anxiousness he will feel rising in his heart so that's interesting that these both things they are there together and that is actually something that i have noticed uh in the spiritual life that it's not black and white it's always something going into the flow and uh experiencing it and desiring to to serve or to experience more and uh then again there come some times where i feel more empty or i feel more in the shadow in the dark because the mind is cloudy or the senses are you know ignorant but then again out of this time again comes the desire i have to get out of it i want to come to my spiritual constitutional position that is something myself so unripe that doesn't mean that i am not worthy or i am uh stupid or so it's just like i have to pray more i have to beg more that is the qualification to be the beggars of mercy it doesn't matter if i am in phd or if i am in kindergarten it doesn't matter if i am a green tomato or a red tomato or a green mango or a red mango So this eagerness and anxiousness will help the sadaka to attain the kingdom of prema city or direct service. And in this lecture Gurudev says, "Yes, what you think about you will dream." So yeah, we have to practice to go intensely into our uh homework. to also observe my own thinking and feeling and desires and to remember you know what is the goal of all of this and how can i be more intense in this how can i be more condensed gurudev spoke 
maybe one year ago, a lot about co condensed feelings. Intense feelings are condensed feelings. Means like when you you you're doing a burfi or you you're cooking uh, any kind of sauce, you know when it in the beginning it's very liquid, and you have to stir and you have to watch it, and you see the bubbles when it's like slightly cooking, and you see the steam is going out, and you know the more intense it gets and the more less water is there, you have to stir. Otherwise, it will burn. <laughs> so I feel also in my bhakti that the steering, when it gets more intense, is very important. Otherwise, I my um, you know all my intensity, all my desires to make a nice dish, to make a nice buffet, it will be burned. It's also useless. But so when it becomes intense, then I have to really look. Oh, do I need more liquid? Do I need to stir it more? Do I have to put the heat down? Or do I have to put the heat up? How, how you know, what should be the color of the burfi? Should it be more brownish? Should I have a burfi that has a intense nutty taste? Because the chickpea flour, it has, you know, different, different flavors according to the color of how much you are burning it or stirring it in the pan. So these are all, you know, considerations that I, I uh, also check myself. Where am I? You know, am I dried out? When I'm dry, I need to put more liquid. Where do I get the liquid? The liquid comes in association, in you know, hearing and uh, exchanging of feelings and feeling close to my my friends, my brothers and sisters. And exchanging love and appreciating each other and showing love and showing interest. I become dry when I get isolated. When I get uh, so much into my own habits and my daily, you know, um, how you say, to-do list, and then I cannot share. I have a friend that... He uh, is going sometimes between Christmas and New Year's. He's going into a retreat. He calls it retreat. He calls it my withdrawal. I want to go into some, you know, special mood of withdrawal. <laughs> and I say, yeah, very good. But then I think, okay, what is the use if we all withdraw? I want to exchange love. I want to share. I want to feel you. Let's be, you know, connected. <laughs> anyway, this is just some personal um, feelings that I have. Because if I really like someone, then I want to be close, right? Of course, everyone has times of withdrawal. I also have them, especially when the body needs a uh, covering of you know, when you are sick or something, then you just lie down. And But even our Gurudev, he is so great. He's so special that even when he has a cough, when he feels not good, his doors are always wide open. You see, that is the example of how intense, uh, you know, the levels of bhakti are when we are really always open with our hearts and our minds and in our natures. But of course, then we know this Indian nature is also special because they grow up so close. No? They grow up all together in one bed or so or in one room. And that is very, very uh, special. That is very special. Nowadays in our you know, European countries, we see the tendency that people are more isolated. And that also is a you know kind of a luxury everyone has their own apartment everyone has their own kitchen but it's more fun to cook together and to come together and exchange love and that's why also naratam das taco says this in insatiability is a good sign i want to meet more i want to connect more i want to feel you 
because your feelings, they help me grow in my feelings. You know, everyone has a special feeling in their own practice. And a special feeling is always uh, you know, something that friends will share with each other, not to show off, but to, to inspire. And even I noticed that with Gould, if lately, he always listen and he, when we ask him to say something, he says, no, I want to listen. I want to learn from you. And that is not artificial for Gould. It's not that he wants to encourage us because we are, you know, babies that need to be encouraged. Yes, we are. But at the same time, I feel when Gurudev listens to the, you know, to our little, you know, whatever we want to share, he also feels inspired and he also gets into it. And I love that because it shows to me that in the end, on the spiritual in the in the final spiritual reality we are all friends and we are all helping and inspiring each other on the way and i especially love that first verse of vilapa kushmanjali when rupa manjari is going to get her friend rati manjari to see what's happening where are you we are there it's a meeting and i i miss you because usually we're always together <laughs> we serve together we laugh together, we cry together. And that is the Guru Vandana of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. And it's so intimate, it's so confidential, and it's so pure. And I know, I just feel it that also we are together now. We are, you know, we are also a small group and we also develop these relationships amongst each other. It's no competition. It's like when you advance, then I can also advance. When you get more ripe, I want to go closer to you because your ripeness will make me ripe. It will help me ripen my heart, my desires, my thinking and my wanting. So this eagerness and anxiousness will help the sadaka to attain the kingdom of prema city our direct service so that is a, a very great hope because anxiousness in a positive way not like worries or anxiety but anxious my god i want to you know how can i feel more how can i get more touched all these things, you know, how can I come out of my dryness when I have a dry time? How can I get out of my negativity when I feel hopeless? All these things. I need somebody who is ripe and who loves me to catch me and uh, inspire me with their juiciness. <laughs> there is also a great relish in Sadhana Bhakti especially in the Lila Smaran of the Raga Sadaka. There, meditation is just like rendering direct service. Therefore, the wonderful relish they savor through or during their sadhana is incomparable. So that is also amazing. Baba says that when when we practice our remembrances of however we can remember our relationship to Swamini, our services to Swamini. And I know this is also very individual. Usually in our Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition, we have the Astakalya Lila, the eight phases of the day. But I once asked Gurudev, I said, it's... Uh, I have heard also from many devotees who try to practice it artificially or try to learn, you know, and then go by that. They have also dried out. So what is my way? And Gurdjieff says, just, you know, remember during the day what we go and meditate in the classes. And I have gone with this and I, I feel very happy with this. 
but every one of us is different. Everyone has a different meditation. I know, I know, La Banga Latika, you are, you are doing your painting. So you go deeply, right? You are, you are absorbing yourself. That is your absorption. Maybe you want to share about this or you're cooking, right? <laughs> you want to share about your absorption in painting? Rather, dear Suniti, in, in noon time, I always cooking, but I always listen to Zoom and that's melting my heart. I hope that cooking for Radha Mohan will be more nicely when I am flow on, on this sharing. <laughs> yes, you are right with Guru Dev Kripa. When I paint, I feel special connection with him, with Bitarna, for Guru Manjari, and especially with, with words. These words are so deep, they, every sentence has paint, paint, a picture. And um, Goranga Sundara translates a uh, lot of uh, things in Lapa Kusumanjari, but for me, only 10, 10 verses is enough for our life. <laughs> really, because every verse has so many levels. Yeah. That's my experience in paintings. Mm -hmm. Great. And also, I have to say, my dear Suniti, sometimes I share with you some, some bliss, some, some things, because I always feel how you encourage me and give a lot of love to me. And I want to say thank you for this. I want Rather. to say thank you, because... Uh, I feel your paintings, they are touching my heart. I feel how you go deeply inside. And I admire that. Thank you. <laughs> See, that's what I mean when I say about we are making each other juicy, more juicy. Because exchanging yeah. the love, exchanging the feelings, that is uh, making me insatiable. <laughs> I cannot always be on the same level. I'm not city. I'm just begging for mercy but yeah i have to tell that you are inspiring me all of you very much and especially goravani when he's singing then we just go and enter into another realm no? <laughs> the mantras the names of shimati radhika they are so helpful also for for deep feelings and deep cryings and um we never forget this. And I must say also, while we are chanting, Goravani, you, maybe you want to share on this, that you know, the quality of chanting, I mean, singing now with harmonium, with the melodies, it's also different. I mean, I always try to take shelter of the holy name. But now, by Gurudev's mercy, the meditation has become quite uh, different. Now it can be a meeting in the Holy Name. I want to share something. Uh, uh, when I meet first time Gauravani in Zagreb, and he sing uh, the Radharani's name, I start to cry, really. I remember this moment that was so deep experience for me because I also grow more than 40 years I'm in Iskon and follow all, everything what you before say but I feel some different something open in my heart and I never say to Goravani but I don't know if he's here but I feel so so deep emotional moment when when he sing yeah thank you <laughs> for this I don't know is he there or Yes, he's there, but he's just in shock. <laughs> I just think that actually this is all your meditation. It has nothing to do with my singing. Because you're so deep meditating. It is like when someone who is very fortunate, even when he hears in Vrindavan, Oh, no, no, I don't think it was so. Was it in Vrindavan? I, I don't remember the story exactly, but there was one prostitute who was singing the glories of Krishna and somebody 
was melting because of that. So it wasn't the glories of the prostitute, isn't it? So I think it's the glory of the name itself. I'm sorry. I have nothing to do with this mercy. It's just flowing through us. Flowing through you. <laughs> we are pipes. Pipelines. But it's true when we actually share our feelings, they enrich. That's the point. Because everyone is an aspect, a special aspect of Radharani, of Radharani's love. Every person of us is a special aspect. And when these aspects come together, they enrich each other, of course. That's very natural. And even Krishna is actually noticing that. So that's why he's very happy when he can pray to Mandaris, because then he gets even more ecstasy, because he gets even more aspects of the Mahabhav of Swamini. So the ecstasy is always enriched when we share. And I'm very thankful for that. And I'm so happy that more and more of you open up and don't think that they are not worth to share their feelings, because we should. And it's just normal that we think that we are not worth. This is just the state of, of the mind of a devotee that he thinks like that. I'm not worthy. But anyway, this even more enriches that. So please go on and share your feelings. Like small children, very innocent. Don't think you can do something good or something bad. Both is not possible. You just do it out of love. Thank you so much for always being there and always inspiring. And I'm also very thankful to Suniti because she always gives fire, new fire, to wood, which is getting a little bit wet and don't want to burn anymore. And she's putting some new benzene in it, some stuff which will let it burn higher. So that's very good. And Ma Yoga Shakti, she's coming forward and is doing her seva in the front now and not anymore in the back. I'm so thankful for that also. And Sundaram, I like you so much that you are always here, you always listen. And I can feel you so much, although you don't say so much usually, but I'm so thankful. And all of you, Brinda, Viraj Viharini, everyone who's who is there, you are all always making that sharing so rich. And that is needed. Of course, Dayanidhi speaks for himself. Huh? His questions are always very on the point and very rasic. And thank also for all these devotees who always make this seva, technical support, making the base, sitting there silently most of the time, always prepared to serve all these devotees. Thank you all for that. Yes. Shida. So nice. Thank you. Thank you, Goravani, and thank you, Lavanga, for sharing. It's so, like you said, enriching. And I think the fire is from you, Goravani. You are giving me fire because your kirtans and your nice readings and sharings, they always have the fire of love. 
And like I said, we need to help each other ignite again and again when someone gets dry or wet. <laughs> we help each other with the fire of devotion. And that's how it works. The, the Das is, they are never alone. They are always together with their friends and helping and reminding each other. Don't miss it. Like Rupa Mandri is coming to get Ratika. Where are you? <laughs> Without you, I don't feel complete. We have to, we have to, you know, look through the holes in the conch together. <laughs> my, my place is, you know, you are next to me usually. Where are you? I need you at by my side because when you are by my side, then the, the feelings are doubling. <laughs> Because we are nourishing each other's feelings, actually. That is our, uh, how do you say, speciality also as Darcy's. We are here to nourish, to support, to make the, the meeting happen. But also, we cannot be without our uh, sisters. We cannot be. Then even Rupa Manjari, she feels incomplete. She feels my God, where is my Rati Manjari? She has to see this. She has to feel this. I have to get her. So in the same way, if we are like this with each other, then we are always um, getting stronger and growing stronger together. And that will make our Guru Manjari very happy when we are very strong together. Jai Jai Shirade! So thank you all. Today again is the day for the kirtan and Sundaram is arranging, I think, some nice kirtan cuts that we can listen and relish together now. Should we get out of the out of the Zoom, Sundaram? Yes, please. We are so needy. Hey, we are getting kicked out. Radi! Yeah. Change. <laughs> Radi, thank you so much. Radi. Thank you. We are, we are depending on you. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Yes, we are really depending on you. Thank you that you are always here every day, all of you. Thank you so much. Shri Radhe, big thank you to all of you. My God, so much inspiration coming from everybody just to see our Sangha from all over the world coming together at different hours of the day and really prioritizing this. It's so easy in in our lives to um, get wrapped up in, in these other material priorities and to see so many shining, beautiful faces um, logging on to Zoom and connecting uh, from these different corners of the world and feeling like we're, we're all right at home, right next to each other is is so special and and kind of echoing Gauravani's beautiful sharing big big thanks to you suniti every every time i uh i i talk with you i feel just so much hope and and inspiration you know just as you were sharing from the verse with these with these unripe mangoes you know these um the the beautiful thing of an unripe mango is it still has the same qualities as a ripe mango so we all have those there. And as we spend time, as you said, with other ripe mangoes, such as yourself, we can, um, we can hope that the, the ripeness of, of our, or the hardness of, of our unripe mango softens. And so, Shirad, hey, thank you so much, my dear. Jai Ho.